Here. In a half hour. All right, sir. There was no time to lose. Every minute I had to be Charles Haskell was dangerous. And I'd have to be Charles Haskell until I got to some city where I could leave the car and be swallowed up. That meant driving the car as far as San Bernardino, maybe even to Los Angeles. In a little town I might be noticed, but in a city I should be safe enough. Then, after I ditched the car, I could go on to Sue. But those five minutes at the state line, made me realize it might be a good idea to find out a little bit about Mr. Haskell. Then if anybody asked me questions, I could give the right answers. The first thing I found out was that I had $768. This was a lot of jack, but believe me, it was the kind of money I'd rather not have. And then I found out from a letter Haskell was carting around in his bag that he wasn't the open-handed, easy-going big shot who went around buying dinners for strange hitchhikers. Before I got done reading it, I saw him more as a chiseler. It was written to his old man in California, the one he hadn't seen in so many years. In it, Haskell posed as a salesman of hymnals, of all things. It was easy to see where Haskell expected to raise a new stake for his book in Miami by rooking his old man. That was about all I found out from his effects. And it was enough. I told myself, maybe old man Haskell was lucky his son kicked off. He would never know it. But it saved him from taking a flyer in sacred literature preferred. Desert Center, I pulled up for water. There was a woman. Hey, you! Come on if you want to ride. Where are you going? How far are you going? That took me by surprise, and I turned my head to look her over. She was facing straight ahead, so I couldn't see her eyes. But she was young, not more than 24. Man, she looked as if she'd just been thrown off the crummiest freight train in the world. Yet in spite of this, I got the impression of beauty. Not the beauty of a movie actress, mind you, or the beauty you dream about when you're with your wife, but a natural beauty. A beauty that's almost homely because it's so real. Then suddenly she turned to face me. How far did you say you were going? Los Angeles. L.A.? L.A. is good enough for me, mister. That's what I was afraid of. What'd you say? Oh, nothing. Just thinking out loud. People get in trouble for doing that. What's your name? You can call me Vera if you like. You live in Los Angeles? No. Where are you coming from? Oh, back there. Needles? No. Oh, sure, Phoenix. You look just like a Phoenix girl. Are the girls in Phoenix that bad? The girl must have been pretty tired because she fell asleep not 20 minutes after she stepped into the car. She lay sprawled out with her head resting against the far door, like Haskell. I didn't like that part of it much, but I didn't wake her up. It 
it wasn't that this girl still worried me. I'd gotten over that funny feeling I had when she looked at me, which I put down as just my jangled nerves. With her eyes closed and the tenseness gone out of her, she seemed harmless enough. And instead of disliking her, I began to feel sorry for her. The poor kid probably had had a rough time of it. Who was she anyway? And why was she going to Los Angeles? And where'd she come from in the first place? The only thing I knew about it was her name. Not that it made any difference. A few hours more and we'd be in Hollywood. I'd forget where I parked the car and look up Sue. This nightmare of being a dead man would be over. Who this dame was, well, it was no business of mine. Where did you leave his body? Where did you leave the owner of this car? You're not fooling anyone. This buggy belongs to a guy named Haskell. That's not you, mister. You're out of your mind. That's my name, Charles Haskell. I can prove it. It's my driver's Save license. Save yourself the trouble, mister. Having Haskell's wallet only makes it worse. It just so happens I rode with Charlie Haskell all the way from Louisiana. He picked me up outside of Shreveport. You rode? You heard me. Then it all came back to me. All the talk about dueling and scars and scratches. There was no doubt about it. Vera must be the woman Haskell had mentioned. She must have passed me while I slept. Well? Well, I'm waiting. My goose was cooked. She had me. That Haskell guy wasn't dead yet. He wasn't stretched out stiff and cold in any Arizona gully. He was sitting right there in the car, laughing like mad while he haunted me. Well? There was nothing I could say. It was her move. Vera, whatever her name was, it was just my luck picking her up on the road. It couldn't have been Helen, or Mary, or Evelyn, or Ruth. It had to be the very last person I should ever have met. That's life. Whichever way you turn, fate sticks out a foot to trip you. I told her everything, but she didn't believe my story. I should have saved my breath. That's the greatest cock and bull story I ever heard. So he fell out of his car. Say, who do you think you're talking to, a hick? Listen, mister, I've been around, and I know a wrong guy when I see one. What'd you do, kiss him with a wrench? Now, wait a minute. What I told you was true. You see, that's why I had to do it. You think I killed him? Well, the cops would have thought so, too. Yeah, well, maybe they still think so. What makes you so sure I'll shut up about this? Sure, I'm innocent. Give me a break, will you? It won't do me any good having you pinched. The cops are no friends of mine. Now, if there was a reward, but there isn't. Thanks. Don't thank me yet. I'm not through with you by a long shot. Let's see that roll. Is that all Haskell had? Isn't it enough? No, I thought he had more. Not that I know of. You can search me. You think I'm holding out on you? Well, maybe I will at that. He told me he was going to bet $3,000 on a horse named Paradisical on Wednesday at Santa Anita. He was stringing you along. He meant $300. Maybe. Sure, three bucks, $300. He was a piece of cheese, a big blowhard. Listen, mister, don't try and tell me anything about Charlie Haskell. Remember, I knew him better than you did. Okay, then you knew he was a four flusher. That explains the three grand bet. I'm not so sure he didn't have that three grand. Why should I believe you? You got all the earmarks of a cheap crook. Now, wait a Shut minute. Up. You're a cheap crook and you killed him. For two cents, I'd change my mind and turn you in. I don't like you. All right, all right, don't get sore. I'm not getting sore, but just remember who's boss around here. If you shut up and don't give me any arguments, you'll have nothing to worry about. But if you act wise, well, mister, you'll pop into jail so fast it'll give you the bends. I'm not arguing. Well, see that you don't. You know, as crooked as you look, I'd hate to see a fella as young as you wind up sniffing that perfume that Arizona hands out free to murderers. I'm not a murderer. Of course you're not. Haskell knocked his own head off. He fell, that's how it happened, just like I told you. Sure, and then he made you a present of his belongings. I explained why oh, I had to do that. It. Doesn't make a difference one way or another. I'm not a mourner. I liked Haskell even less than I like you. Yeah, I saw what you did to him. What do you mean? Well, scratches on his wrist. Sure, I scratched him. I'll say you did. So your idea was to drive the car a little way, maybe into San Bernardino, and then leave it. You weren't going to sell it? Sell it? You think I'm crazy, somebody else's car? See, all I want to do is leave it somewhere and forget I ever saw it. Not only don't you have any scruples, you don't have any brains. I don't get you. Maybe it's a good thing you met me. You'd have got yourself caught sure. Why, you dope. Don't you know a deserted automobile always rates an investigation? Huh? Look, the cops find a car. Then they get curious. They wonder where the owner is. So, all right, they don't trace Haskell. They trace you. I never thought of that. The only safe way to get rid of the car is to sell it to a dealer. Get it registered under a new name. 
Say, stop at the next door. I want to get a bottle and do some shopping before we hit L.A. Okay. As soon as we find a place, I'll drop you off and pick you up later. Nothing doing. You're coming in, too. From now on, you and I are like the Siamese twins. Have it your way. But I don't get the point. The point is, I don't want you to get lost. I'm not going to beat it if that's what you're afraid of. I'll say you're not. Well, I'm going to see that you sell this car so you don't get caught. Thanks. Of course, your interest wouldn't be financial, would it? You wouldn't want a small percentage of the profits. Well, now that you insist, how can I refuse? A hundred percent will do. I'm fine. I'm relieved. I thought for a moment you were going to take it all. I don't want to be a hog. A few hours later, we were in Hollywood. And I was recognizing places Sue had written about. It struck me that far from being at the end of the trip, there was a greater distance between Sue and me than when I started out. Vera wasn't kidding with that Siamese twins crack. She rented a little apartment as Mrs. Charles Haskell. When I objected to this, she explained that it was on account of the car. A dealer might think something was funny if he called and found we were using different names. Home, sweet home. Yeah. Not bad, either. In case there's any doubt in your mind, I'll take the bedroom. Yeah. Sure is stuffy in here. Keep the window shut. Okay. The old crow downstairs said there's a phone in bed behind this door. You know how to work it? I invented it. Some joint. One can't have everything. I'm first in the bathtub. I don't know why, but I figured you would be. Sure feels good to be clean again. I must be 10 pounds lighter. You must be. Well, Hitchin' Rides isn't exactly the way you keep your schoolgirl complexion. I wish that guy with the sacks would give up. It gets on my nerves. Forget it. Have a drink. Aren't you afraid I might take you up on it? If I didn't want to give you a drink, I wouldn't have offered it. Why be a sorry, Roberts? You got yourself into this thing. You should be grateful I'm not turning you in. Why, if I wasn't regular, you'd be in the pen this minute, being photographed, fingerprinted, and being pushed around by the cops. So cheer up. Get rid of that long puss. Or is your conscience bothering you? No, it isn't. Swell, well, that's the spirit. He's dead and no moment around will bring him back. Anyway, I never could understand this worrying about something that's over and done with. Now look, Vera, for the last time I didn't kill him. Haskell was a sick man. Maybe he was dead before he fell out of the car. I don't know. Sure, sure, he died of old age. All right. So if it'll make you sociable, you didn't kill him. Thanks. We're out of liquor, Roberts. Yeah. Too bad. I felt like getting tight tonight. Well, I think you succeeded. Am I tight? As a prima donna's corset. That's good. I wanted to get tight. Why? What have you got to get tight about? Oh, I don't know. A few things. Huh. You should have my worries. If I had your troubles, I'd stay sober. And I've got the key to that door. Yeah. 
Maybe you're right. I'm always right. You know, I don't like your attitude, Roberts. Well, there's a lot of things I don't like. Sure. But life's like a ball game. You gotta take a swing at whatever comes along before you wake up and find it's a ninth inning. You read that somewhere. That's the truth, Roberts. All you do is bellyache. Making it easy and well, trying to make the best of things. But maybe that's what's wrong with the whole world. Get the professor. People lock themselves out trying to buck fate. Now take you, for instance. You're lucky to be alive. Why, well, suppose Haskell had opened your door. You'd be playing a harp now. Think of that. You think of it. I'm tired of thinking. There's plenty of people dying this minute. I would give anything to trade places with you. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not so sure. At least they know they're done for. They don't have to sweat blood wondering if they are. Your philosophy stinks, pal. We all know we're gonna kick off someday. It's only a question of when. But what got us on this subject anyway? We'll be discussing politics next. Yeah. Where'd you hide the butts? On the table, sucker. We bored each other with conversation for a couple of hours longer. Every five minutes, one of us was wishing we had another bottle or a radio or something to read. Then finally, we ran out of chatter. I know it's only 11 o'clock, but I want to get up early and make the rounds of the used car lots. No hurry about that. We've got all the time in the world. Maybe you have, but if you think I want to stay cooped up in this place any longer than I have to, you're batty. It's not a bad place. We pay plenty for diggings like this in New York. I wouldn't like it if it was the Ritz. Liquor. You got a mean cough. Ought to do something about it. That'll be all right. That's what Camille said. Who? Nobody you know. Wasn't that the day in the diet of consumption? Yeah. Wouldn't it be a break for you if I did kick off? You'd be free with all Haskell's dough and car. I don't want to see anybody die. Not even me. Especially not you. One person died of me. If you did, well, that's all I need. You don't like me, do you, Roberts? Like you? I love you. My favorite sport is being kept prisoner. After we sell the car, you can go to blazes for all I care. But not until then. I'm going to bed. Good night, Roberts. Don't try and sneak away during the night. All the doors are locked. Anyway, if I find you gone in the morning, I'll notify the police. They'll pick you up. Don't worry, I know when I'm in a spot. Well, good night. I hope that portable rack isn't too uncomfortable for you. Don't lose any sleep over it, will you, fall in love with her, marry her, and make a respectable woman of her. 
or else she'd make some supreme class A sacrifice for me and die. Sue and I would fall a little over a grave and make some crack about there's good in all of us. But Vera, unfortunately, was just as rotten in the morning as she'd been the night before. All right, all right, I'm coming. Look, Vera, it's almost noon. So what? The dealers will be there all day? They'll be there all year, too, but it doesn't wait that long. Shut up. You make us like a husband. Well... Do I rate a whistle? You sure do, but let's go. Let's go, let's go. I spent 85 bucks and two hours preparing bait, and all you can say is let's go. <sighs> Come on. We've had a few used car lots last night down this way. What do you think we can get for this heap? I don't know. Plenty. You let me handle everything. Think we can get $2,000? I don't know, but don't worry. I'll squeeze as much out of this guy as I can. I let it go cheap without a fight, he might think we've stolen the car. And listen, don't make any slips and call me Roberts. That'll cook us. I don't need you to tell me that. You better just sit by and keep your mouth closed. Remember, we're both in the soup if anything happens. Forget it and drive. You're my wife, Vera Haskell. Look, after the deal's closed, let's go back to that place on Hollywood Boulevard where I saw the fur jacket. I won't buy it. After the deal's closed, I'm saying goodbye to you. That's right, I forgot. I guess I'm getting kind of used to you. Well, that's a habit you can start breaking. Let's try this place in the middle of the block. Good afternoon. What can I do for you? We're interested in selling a car. If the price is right. Well, if it's in good mechanical condition, it should blue book for about 1600 Tony, take a look at this motor. 1600 Are you kidding? 